Hello everyone, welcome to DMED. Let's start with basic anatomy. In So, starting with the history, he, we all know that Hippocrates, he's the founder of the science of anatomy, and Herophilus was the founder of anatomy. So, the human anatomy deals with various structures. Uh, it's, it's various structures that make up the human body. It has many branches like systemic, regional, surface, geological, morphology, comparative anatomy, embryology, teratology, statistical anatomy, anthropology, cross-section anatomy, and cytology. And histology, obviously, in applied anatomy or clinical anatomy. The anatomical nomenclature is the, uh, what are the terms that are being used in an anatomy day to day to understand the structures and the orientation in anatomy. So in the anatomical, when we say that a person is in an anatomical position, that means a person is standing erect, straight, legs together and arms by their side with their heads, eye, eyes, toes and palms of the hands facing forward. It is important to remember that the palm face forward as the patient is in the relaxed position. You see here, this is the anatomical position of a person so when uh, please notice that the little finger is towards the body and the thumb is away from the body that means the cubital fossa is in front of the elbow so this is the anatomical position of your arms which we which the students mostly mistake so with relation in relation to that uh, the importance here is the anatomical position allows us to describe the position of structures in relation to their surroundings for example the heart lies above the diaphragm the anatomical position avoids confusion as to whether the body is lying down or standing up you should also bear in mind that when looking at a person in the anatomical position their right side will be on your left the structures will always be described as they are to the subject rather than as they appear to you. So, the planes, there are three major planes, axial, coronal, and sagittal. The axial plane is also known as transverse plane. This plane cuts the body horizontally into superior and inferior, or you can say upper and lower portion, like you see here. The transverse plane is cutting the body in superior, that means upper half and the lower half, that's inferior. The next plane is coronal plane. It is also known as frontal plane. It is called as frontal plane because it crosses over the frontal suture of the head skull. So this body cuts the body vertically into anterior and posterior, that means front and back so here you can see the frontal plane is cutting the body from in front and back okay here you can see the front uh, the third person with the yellow triangle yellow rectangle it's cutting the person in front and back that's the frontal plane or coronal plane the next is the sagittal plane it's called a sagittal because it cuts the body through the sagittal suture of your skull so sagittal is basically cuts the body into left and right portions here you can see the orange rectangle is cutting the body into right and left so it's a sagittal the second body which is being cut transversely by the purple triangle purple rectangle it's upper half and lower half or superior and inferior and the yellow rectangle is cutting the body in front and back or anterior and posterior so the direction is used when the body is in the anatomical position to explain the location of a structure relative to the structures surrounding it so it we refer as interior posterior superior inferior lateral and medial to simplify it, anterior is basically towards the front of the body or you can say in front of. For example, the sternum lies anterior to the heart. The posterior, when you say posterior, it means that it is towards the back of the body. That means the heart lies posterior to the sternum. 
superior means above and inferior means below so the heart lies above the diaphragm and the diaphragm lies below the heart that means lies inferior to the heart and lateral is away from the midline and medial is towards the midline so lungs lie lateral to the heart and heart lies medial to the lungs then there are other terms like deep away from the body surface towards the inner body like the heart is deep to the sternum the sternum is above and it the deep to the sternum is the heart next is the superficial that means towards the external surface of the body like the sternum is superficial to the heart and proximal that means near to the, to the trunk of the body the shoulder is proximal to the elbow and like elbow is proximal to your wrist joint so that means it is more towards the body the trunk of the body and and if you say distal then the there is distal the elbow is distal to the shoulder that means away from the trunk of the body and elbow is distal to the shoulder wrist joint is distal to the elbow yes next we are we divide as regions the body is split into two main areas the axial and the pendicular regions or you can say axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton the axial region refers to the head and the vertebral column and trunk and the appendicular region refers to the pelvic girdles upper and lower limbs each area is further divided into descriptive regions for example the axial regions are further divided as cephalic means head frontal means forehead facial means face occipital is your back of the head orbital is your eye cavity buccal is the cheek thoracic is chest sternum means sternum umbilical means navel or belly button inguinal is groin so pubic is mons pubis or pubic bone genital means reproductive organs perineum means perineum and dorsum that means back vertebral means spinal column cervical refers to the neck and thoracic is middle of the back and lumbar is lower back sacral sacrum so when by thoracic means the uh, the part of the white vertebral vertebral canal that is middle of the back and lumbar mean lumbar vertebral column is basically your lower back and then the, if there is a sacral column which is the sacrum then we have appendicular or upper limb uh, like pectoral means chest clavicular is clavicles the beauty bones and acromial acromion of the shoulder scapula scapular and interscapular means between the two scapula there is a space that's called interscapular axillary means armpit brachial that means arm antibrachial forearm cubital means elbow the cubital fossa is basically the fossa that is in front of the elbow carpal is wrist the carpal bones in your wrist are carp is carpal area then digits are your fingers pollicis is thumb palmer is palm of the hand the lower limb has uh, it can be said as uh, gluteal means buttocks coxal means hip femoral means thigh patellar is front of the knee popliteal is back of the knee crural mm -hmm. is leg tarsal means ankle calcaneal means heel pedal means foot plantar means sole of the foot so the body cavities there are two main body cavities ventral and dorsal the dorsal body cavity is the back of the body and is the smaller of the two cavities it can be further divided into upper and lower portion that means the cranial cavity your skull and the vertebral canal respectively then the ventral body cavity is the front of the body and is the larger of the two cavities it can be further divided into three cavities thoracic cavity abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity the thoracic and abdominal cavities are by divided by diaphragm and the abdominal and pelvic cavities are continuous with each other 
dorsal cavity, small cavity at the back of the body. It has cranial cavity that means that is upper portion which is bounded by the skull. It contains brain and meninges and the vertebral canal has lower portion bounded by the vertebral column, intervertebral disc and surrounding ligaments. It contains a spinal cord and spinal nerves. The ventral cavity is the large cavity at the front of the body that means it has thoracic cavity which has it's a large cavity above the diaphragm it is bounded laterally by ribs covered by costal pleura and the diaphragm inferiorly covered by diaphragmatic pleura it contains heart lung trachea and esophagus large blood vessels and nerves the abdominal cavity is the large cavity below the diaphragm diaphragm is basically the muscle which divides the thorax, thorax and abdomen i hope you know it is bound superiorly by the diaphragm literally by body wall and inferiorly by pelvic cavity contain gastrointestinal tract, spleen, kidneys and adrenal glands. The pelvic cavity is a small cavity below the brim of the pelvis. It is bounded superiorly by the abdominal cavity, posteriorly by the sacrum and literally by the pelvis. It contains urinary bladder, genitals, sigmoid colon and rectum. So here you can see the two divisions of the body cavities. The dorsal cavity and the ventral cavity the dorsal cavity is cranial cavity and the spinal cavity and the ventral cavity is comprised of thoracic cavity this dark yellow line the shadow you are seeing in between the two cavities is basically the, the dive diaphragm which is dividing into the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity the abdominal cavity is then continued with the pelvic cavity at the pelvic brim so it Combinedly, you can call it as abdominal pelvic cavity. The quadrants and the regions of the abdomen, the abdomen can be divided by two lines into four quadrants or by four lines into nine regions. So, the two lines that divide the abdomen into quadrants from across, the center of which is positioned over the umbilicus, the belly button. These quadrants are often used to indicate the location of pain, the right upper quadrant left upper quadrant right lower quadrant and left lower quadrant yes I love anatomy so the let's talk about the lines which divides into the regions there are two vertical lines and two horizontal lines that divide the abdomen into a grid the vertical lines also known as literal lines are positioned using the middle of each clavicle as a reference the upper horizontal line, also known as the transpyloric or subcostal line, here you see, and its position at the level of the pylorus of the stomach close to the subcostal margin of the ribs. The subcostal margin of the ribs is basically the margin that crosses through the costal margin, that means the rib margin. Subcostal means uh, the lower margin of the ribs sub means lower and costal means rib so so the subcostal margin of the ribs and as it crosses to through the subcostal margin of bilateral ribs it crosses over the pylorus of the stomach which is the end part of the stomach the lower horizontal line also known as trans tubercular line is positioned at the level of anterior superior iliac spines of the coxal or hip bone here you see and this trans tubercular line is called as trans tubercular because they crosses the iliac bone at the tubercular region so now the regions the region is basically right hypochondrium right hypochondrium or right hypochondriac region and left hypochondriac region and epigastric region so the one you are seeing here is its right hypochondriac region its epigastrium its left hypochondriac region then its right iliac region and then left iliac region and this is this one is hypogastrium and 
uh, this is umbilicus and the right lumbar and left lumbar region so let's move to our slide okay okay so here you see the right hypochondric region epigastric region left hypochondric region right lumbar region umbilical region left lumbar region right iliac region hypogastric region left iliac region the lifespan of the human being prenatal and postnatal life in childhood it can be described as if uh, it's ovum then it's fertilization till the end of first week it's ovum then if uh, you refer as embryo that means second week to eighth week it's embryo and fetus is third to tenth month is a fetus then the postnatal life is uh, referred as life after birth till death so that if they if it's newborn it's a neonatal period which is birth to the end of second week and the infancy is basically the third week of life till end of first year it's infant or infancy then the childhood is early middle and later early childhood is milk tooth period that's second to sixth year inclusive then middle childhood which is permanent tooth period seventh to ninth or tenth year inclusive and late childhood is prepubertal that's from 9 to 10 years to 12 to 15 years in female and in males it's 9 to 10 years to 13 to 16 years in males it the adolescence is six years after the puberty and the adult is prime and transition between 20 to 60 years and old age and senescence is from 60 years to death so the basic organization of the body is it starts with the cell the cell theory is that the human body can organize on the basis of cell theory that is cell is the structural unit of whole human body the cells combine and forms a tissue after the collection of cells uh, of similar morphology performing a special function that is called as tissue epithelium connective tissue nervous tissue and muscle tissue are all are its types these tissues comes together and form an organ so the association of different tissues is called an organ which performs certain functions for example heart stomach and urinary bladder there are multiple systems that have been working in our body so the these organs that are uh, harmoniously working to discharge a specific function it forms a system for example the skeletal system formed up of bones muscular system formed up of muscles cardiovascular system that's formed with the heart and arteries and veins the nervous system made up of brain spinal cord spinal nerves peripheral nerves and the urogenital system from the kidney urinary bladder ureter and uh, endocrine system which is formed up from the glands uh, in our body salivary gland thymus gland uh, endocrine uh, pancreas and uh, thyroid gland all of these glands are under endocrine system and the lymphatic system the lymphatic system is comprised of lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels so what are gyri and sulci have you ever heard of it each hemisphere in the brain is greatly folded forming gyri and sulci gyri means folds and sulci means grooves which increases the surface area of the cerebral cortex although the exact location of the sulci and gyri varies between different individuals there are a number of large gyri and deep sulci which can be identified as constant landmarks the brain and the spinal cord contains both gray and white matter in the brain the gray matter can be found in the cerebral cortex the basal ganglia and the limbic system it is made up of cell bodies dendrites and synapses of the neurons and are grouped into functionally important nuclei the white matter is made up of myelinated fibers which connect the different parts of the brain to each 
other as well as to the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the spinal cord is oval in cross section and consists of white matter and uh, it is the gray matter it has gray matter lies centrally and is arranged into central dorsal and lateral gray horns anterior and posterior horn it consists of neurons and neutrites neuroglia and blood vessels it appears gray because of the abundance of neuronal cell bodies the white matter surrounds the gray matter and is white in color due to the presence of myelin which insulates the nerve fibers so here you are seeing the skull the skull has different flat bones attached together to form the skull it has frontal bone which makes your forehead then the parietal bone the frontal and the parietal bone is connected by this line or you can say suture which is called coronal suture then we have parietal the two parietals that comes together to make a suture that's sagittal suture and parietal and occipital it occipital is at the back of the head and it's called the suture in between is called parieto occipital suture and the parietal and temporal bone temporal bone is at the side of the skull and it has it is forming suture with parietal bone which is called parieto temporal suture in in front of the temporal bone you can appreciate a pink bone which is which is obviously not pink in real it's sphenoid bone and there's this this ethmoid bone at the base of the skull which you can appreciate from the orbital cavity and the nasal bone in front which makes the bridge of the nose and there is the lacrimal bone and the maxilla in front which is making the face in front and the zygomatic bone which makes your cheekbone and the max mandible obviously the jawbone there are total 11 uh, sorry uh, there are uh, there are total 12 cranial nerves olfactory optic ocular motor trochlear trigeminal abducens facial vestibular cochlear glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory and hypoglossal nerves all these nerves supply and quite different functions which we will be discussing in our upcoming lectures and i hope you enjoyed the video and have grasped um, the knowledge the basic knowledge of anatomy it the it is a very vast subject and requires time and attention i hope you like the video and please like and subscribe thank you